Okay, in this uh, file we want to discuss the case where the source is moving but the detector is stationary. So we want to see the perceived frequency by the detector. How much is it compared to the frequency that the source is emitting the wave at? So let's first just remember the, the difference between the speed, the typical speed of a wave and a typical speed of the source. A uh, sound wave, for instance, uh, moves in air at about 331 meters per second. If you imagine a typical application of this or an example, you, an ambulance moving with a siren on, and the ambulance could be moving typically, I mean, this is just order of magnitude, 20 meters per second. So you can see that the, the, the source that we're talking about that's moving is very moving much slower than the speed of the wave itself. That's what I'm assuming in this file and what follows. So you have here um, uh, the source is moving with a speed V source and the wave is moving with a speed V wave. So the, at time zero, the first wave front is emitted by the source and that's indicated by this bar. And after a time TS, which is the period of the source, uh, that's the time at which the second wave front has to be emitted. But the thing is that the source, because it's moving, when it emits the second wave front, it has moved a certain distance. Now, what's the distance that the source has moved? It's the speed that it's been moving, V source, times the time, which is T source. So this is the distance that it moved during that time. Now, then that, that means that the first wave front has moved how much distance during that time? It's already been moving for a certain amount of time. And the second wave front is emitted not at the location that the first wave front was emitted, but a little bit to the right of that. And so the wavelength now between the, or the distance between the two wave fronts is not as much as it was before, it's a bit less and it's, it's basically lambda prime w. This will be the new wavelength, the distance between the two wave fronts. If we want to compare this distance, the new wavelength compared to the old wavelength, the old wavelength is the distance from here to here because if the, the, if the source was stationary, it would have emitted the second front at this point. And so this would have been the wavelength if the source was stationary. And so the distance here from here to here, the, the wavelength of the wave for the old wavelength where, where the source was stationary is VWTS. And so we see here that the new wavelength is shorter. And it's a very simple relationship then between these three things. The, the relationship is that lambda prime is lambda minus VSTS. And so you have basically something like this happening. The wavelength, when the source is moving to the right and you're looking at what's happening on the right side, you see that the wavelength is a bit shorter compared to when the source was at rest. And uh, the, it, it depends if the source is moving to the right or to the left. If the source is moving to the right, you can see even from the formula, if you put Vs to be positive, and because the source is moving to the right, then you have the new wavelength is smaller because you have a number minus some number, so you get a smaller wavelength. But if the source moves to the left, you can see that when Vs is negative, then you get negative, negative is positive, then you get a bigger wavelength. And so you can see here the wavelength is bigger when the source is moving to the left compared to when the source is at rest. And of course, if you apply the formula when the source is at rest here, you get Vs is zero, and of course there's no change in wavelength. So this, uh, what we're dealing with, you have three situations, the source at rest, source moving to the right, or source moving to the left. So that's basically what happens when the source moves. The wavelength gets less or more, depending on if the source is moving to the right or if it's moving to the left. Okay, so once now these two wave fronts are emitted, they always move out with the same speed, Vw. And so they maintain the distance between the wave fronts to be the same, which is lambda prime W. And then now we can see what happens when the wave fronts arrive at the detector. So at this point in time, 
the first wave front arrived at the detector. Now, at this point in time, after some time, the second wave front arrived at the detector. And that's this amount of time then between here and here is basically the period of the detector because it's the time uh, between when the detector felt the first wave front and the second wave front. And so that's why we call that time TD. And let's see what that time is. Well, the, the second wave front moved well, how much distance during that time? It moved lambda prime. And lambda prime, um, it was moving at the speed VW. So the, the time is the distance over the speed. So it's lambda prime over VW. So that's the perceived period of the detector. So lambda prime over Vw, but lambda prime, we can substitute what it is. It's lambda minus Vs, Ts, and lambda, I can also replace it by Vw, Ts. And so we get this relationship. You notice here we can take a common factor, Ts, and so you get that. So that means that the perceived period of the detector is different than the period of the source by this factor. And since the frequency is 1 over the period, then if we get 1 over both sides, then we can show that the frequency is basically 1 over Ts times this factor, but 1 over Ts is the frequency of the source. And so we get a simple relationship then between the frequency of the detector and the frequency of the source. The frequency of the detector is changed or perceived to be different than the frequency of the source by this factor. And let's look then at this factor uh, if the frequency gets bigger or smaller. Well, I mean, just intuitively, if you see that the distance between the wave fronts is smaller when the source moves to the right, that means the source, the detector will feel the wave fronts faster, so the period is smaller, so the frequency should be. Uh, should be uh, higher. And so let's see if that gives the, that, that if this formula gives this, uh, this intuitive um, expectation. So if the source moves to the right, Vs is positive. So for instance, let's, let's just give for simplicity numbers that are not realistic, but just to see if this term is bigger or smaller, is, or smaller than one. So let's say Vw is 10. So you have 10 over 10 minus one. So you have 10 over 9, so that means it's bigger than 1. So that means when Vs is positive and it's smaller than Vw, we already said it's much smaller, so then this factor is bigger than 1. And so when the source moves to the right, the frequency is perceived to be bigger than the frequency of the source. Now, when the source moves to the left, remember we said that the wavelengths are going to be larger. So the time it takes the detector to per to see the two wave fronts is going to be larger. If the time is larger, then the frequency is smaller. So we should predict that the frequency is smaller if the, if the source is moving to the right, to the left. Now, if the source moves to the left, Vs is negative. So you have minus minus is positive. So you have 10 over 10 plus 1. So 10 over 11, for instance. So the frequency is reduced then in this case. So when the detector moves, when the source moves to the left, uh, the frequency, the perceived frequency is less than the frequency of the source. So this summarizes the situation we have when the detector is at rest. What kind of frequency does it perceive? It depends if the source is moving to the left or if the source is moving to the right. If the source is moving to the right, then, as we said, the wavelength is shorter. That means the time between successive wave fronts perceived by the detector is smaller. That means that the frequency is higher. And you can see in this formula again by putting Vs to be positive. So you get a fraction, a fraction here that's, um, that's bigger than 1. And if the source is moving to the left, then the wavelength is larger, so the time it takes between two wave fronts for the detector to perceive two wave fronts is longer, then the frequency is smaller. And you can see in this formula that when you put Vs to be negative, you get, for instance, 10 over 10 plus 1, which is a fraction that's less than 1, so the frequency is smaller.
So, of course, remember this 10 over 10 plus 1, I'm just putting those numbers just to get an, an idea if it's bigger than 1 or less than 1, but of course we know that the speed of the wave is about in sound, in sound wave, for instance, in areas 331, so I'm just giving those numbers just as an idea.